Hey, what is going on, guys? Talk Nori City here, back for week 10 of the TNC podcast. It is truly yes. flying by now, and very lucky to have alongside us Mr. Chris Gorham. Hello. Hello, everyone. BBC Hello. Radio Norfolk legend. <laughs> Why have you waited till week 10? Well, we wanted to kind of <laughs> <the> slowly <laughs> build. And now we the peak. occasion. Yeah. And um, now it's a slow kind of... You've, so you had, you've already had Butler on, haven't you? We've had Rob on. He's right. thrown out some vicious accusations about you <laughs> yeah, on your away you days. So, I, first, I mean, first of all, let's get to them accusations. Throw it out there that you, you're the man who's scoffing all the sweets and the chocolate and he's getting no snacks to himself on the away days. I would say there's an element of truth in that, but uh, that's for Rob's own good. <laughs> Partly because he did go through a, a mini spell earlier this season where he uh, gave up chocolate. Okay. But replaced it with more sweets. Right. So uh, that maybe defeated the object slightly. But fair play to him for giving it a go because I, I couldn't get through a whole season without without <laughs> snacks. But um, I, I would say I over the course of the season I probably tend to do most of the driving probably. So Ooh. well, no, I've, I've, I've heard off well, the grapevine that Rob isn't the best of drivers. Well, well I wouldn't say that. That's really <laughs> unfair. <laughs> not, I wouldn't say that at all. Okay. No, Rob. Uh, we, we have our own little way of working. I think if you're going to do any driving, then you're it's you're like the car. You need fuel. So if you're going to if you're going to yeah. drive if you're going to drive to Wigan and Cardiff in the same week as yeah. we have done, yeah, and maybe you're going to have a few sweets along the way. What's the problem? Does Rob buy the teas and coffees yes. as well? Oh, yeah, there you go, he's, then. A man. Man. he's a generous man. I like the relationship. He yeah. out. Yeah. Um, for we've got a lot of opposition fans watching this. So for oh, really? people who don't know who you are, how would you describe yourself? Who are you? Um, somebody with a face for radio. Um, I've I've been commentating on Norwich City's matches for the last 10, 12 years, something it's like that. that long it now. is, yeah, wow. um, amazing. But before that, um, Norwich City fan went to my first game when I was four years old. Uh, Where'd you sit? I sat. It would have been in the South Stand. Okay. Uh, yeah, and then I had a season ticket from the age of about seven. I used to go with my dad, my nan and granddad. So it's it's in the family. Yeah. No choice but being a Norwich City fan and. That's kind of how I've ended up where I am now. Yeah, because I was thinking before the podcast, and you're the only person I've ever listened to on Radio Norfolk because the 10 or 12 years, I wasn't listening to the commentary when I was like five. So you're the only yeah. voice wow. I say to you in the <laughs> which is yeah, quite strange. Scary for you, uh, uh, it is scary because <laughs> well, I grew up listening to Roy, yeah. Roy mm. Waller, who did the, did the job before me, and I was lucky enough to work with him. And I think, I'm trying to, remember, I'm trying to think back, when I was first into football and first mm. going to all of Norwich City's matches... I don't think every match was broadcast live on the radio. Okay. Uh, and I remember thinking, sitting in my front room at home, and you didn't have the internet, so you'd be watching games on CFAX. Yeah. Probably don't you remember yeah. CFAX? No, 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 So you, you would have the scores up, and it would be 302 would be the football index. Yeah. And then you'd go, no, nobody who's young enough to watch this remember CFAX. <laughs> well, I remember. So, so, like some old granddad. But you would. I do. The scores would be up, and it would. it's like, if you imagine Soccer Saturday. Yeah. But without any of the people, just with the text. <laughs> without the Jeff. It was like that. To be and fair, sometimes that might be better without <laughs> Jeff Stelling. It, it did the pay. job. Not that I ever watched Soccer Saturday, of course, because it's all about BBC Radio Norfolk. <laughs> of course. Saturday afternoon. Getting the plugs in. Where um, else would you rather be? I mean, there's been some, some memorable commentary moments, but I would have thought, from a listening point of view, the game that we've just witnessed against Leeds was probably the most exhausting <laughs> to listen to. It was, it was end-to-end. I mean, let's touch on that. Chris, brief. Two Chris's. What are we going to call ourselves? Because we can't just be like Chris Reed, Chris Gorham. I think Chris c- can keep his first name tonight. And you can be... What are you going to go for? I can't really call you Revo because I'm a Reeve as well. Oh, no. Oh, this yeah. is weird, isn't it? This oh, is... no. I'll just call you Chris and look at you. If... <laughs> yeah, but this is so confusing for, for listeners on SoundCloud and, and, and iTunes now. That's true. Revo. We'll, we'll... Go Revo. Okay. Go Revo. This is weird because my nickname's Revo. But anyway, Revo. Um, Leeds, it was a... Yeah. Story of our season, wasn't it? Yeah, it is. Um, particularly Naismith uh, absolutely summarises it. I'm going to go in early, Will Naismith, Jack. Uh, absolutely epitomises our season. Finally delivered some final product, scored. I'm sure we'll go into the, the, the abuse that I got when Stephen Naismith scored. And then Stephen Naismith does what he does best and you know ends up ruining it. So it's a real shame, but it sums up our season. But it was a very entertaining game. Does it really matter? No, it doesn't matter anymore. But as as you wanted, Jack, you got what you wanted, which was to knock Leeds out of the playoff. Yeah, it, it was a beautiful feeling, knocking Leeds out. I mean, let's touch on Stephen Naismith. I think he was probably one of the big talking points. Um, you're obviously not a massive fan. I know you have to stay fairly balanced. Okay. But well, where, where do you stand with Stephen Naismith? I, I think in, in, I think Stephen Naismith um, 
could have, and this is underlined in red pen, could could have a, a significant role and important role in, in what Nor- Norwich City do next season. Now, mm. we're saying this without knowing what the rest of the makeup of the squad is going to be. But mm. One thing I've certainly noticed about Stephen Naismith recently, and preface all this by saying that, yes, he's not done what we thought he'd do when we paid £8.5 million yeah. pounds for him. He was bought to score the goals to keep Norwich in the Premier League. So that didn't work. Mm. That goes almost without saying. Yeah. But we are where we are now. And if fans are talking about wanting to see younger players in the team... James Madison, the Murphy boys, wanting them to get more of a chance, even Alex Pritchard. I think Naismith could have an important role to play because one thing I've noticed in the last few weeks particularly, when we're up on the gantry of the, the, the south stand looking down and you get the mm. perfect view of the pitch, he's a real talker. He's yep. often in the ears of the Murphys. There was an incident at, at Preston a few weeks ago where Alex Pritchard um, was involved in a bit of a to-and-fro with Alan Irving during the game and Naismith stepped in and was the go-between and sorted okay. all that. Translator. Out. Yeah, maybe that's <laughs> what it was, yeah. But I think he's... So I think from an experience point of view... I think he's. I think he could have a, a really important role to play. I asked Alan Irving that very question after the game on Saturday, and he mm. said that if he was the Norwich City head coach for next season, he would be desperate to have mm. Stephen Naismith as part of the setup. And, and I can understand why, because I think that the experience that he's got is going to be vital to pass on to those younger players. And one of the other, one of the recurring themes through this whole season has been Norwich City don't have enough leaders. Where are the leaders on the pitch? Well, he is one of those. So. While I would say that, yes, he, he hasn't turned out to be the player we thought we were getting when we spent that amount of money on from Everton, mm. I, I don't think he's, he, he's outlived his usefulness. Yeah, I think they could, there's definitely a role for him to play. A good I, squad player. Well, I suppose your argument would be... A good squad player. Chris, that, um, yeah, a good squad player. But your argument would probably be that you'd rather Naismith go to allow the younger players to get in the team because at the moment we've got like four or five it's, central attacking midfielders. And it's what you said, Jack. If Naismith knocks on your door, you're going to give him the chance over Madison at the moment. But for me, still, Wes over Naismith, Pritchard over Naismith. Uh, for me, I want to see youngsters now. It's about time that Norwich changed their ethos. So I want Madison over Naismith as well. I can understand Chris's point of view that I think he would be good in the mix to pass on his experience to young players, but that's that's quite an expensive luxury to have a player like that sitting on your bench with with that price tag. And at the end of the day, you can say what you like, and, uh, and basically, we I received loads of at the last <laughs> podcast, I slated Stephen Naismith for not having enough final product because at the time he'd scored only seven goals. Right. For, a, for an attacking midfield player. Which, so that's more than Wes Hillan this season? Which is more than Wes, but Wes probably hasn't played as many. I, I love Wes. The Naismith end product argument is an interesting one mm-hmm. because... He's, he's actually scored a fair few goals this he's season. He's scored more than Wes Hillan this season. He's scored... I think he's now scored more than Pritchard this season. And Pritchard's yet, not played as many games. Well, so. no, but that, that's, this is the sort of thing. And even, even on Saturday, the, the last away games, Norwich scored three at Preston. He set them both up, or two of the three up. Mm-hmm. The previous goal they scored away from that it. was at Bristol City, yeah. and he set the goal up in that game as yeah. well. So that I'm, I think Stephen Naismith, I can understand why. I think because he's not turned out to be the sort of player mm. we hoped we were getting, mm. I think some fans have developed a bit of a blind spot to, yeah. to his, his good points. Don't you think it's really frustrating though, Chris, that Stephen Naismith has only just started to deliver, to deliver really? Uh, maybe maybe it is frustrating. As I said earlier on, he's, he didn't do the job that we thought he was going to do, but we can't worry about what's gone before. Mm-hmm. We've got to worry about where we're going to go from next season. And yes, we want to see bright young players mm-hmm. coming through, but you do need a mix of experience okay. yeah. with that. And I think that's he, he is one of the most experienced players Norwich have got. And and the way the way I've seen him talking to players, the way that other people talk about him, then I. I I can mm-hmm. certainly see a role for him at Norwich City. And what, I, I can agree with the talking point of view, definitely, because we definitely do need leaders on the pitch. The one thing I'd criticise Cam Jam of is perhaps getting on the young players' backs a little bit too easily. Some of the talking is more kind of like, oh, for God's sake, lad. Mm. Whereas I can understand that Stephen Nason just goes, oh, come on. And he does cause problems and he does kind of niggle at players. And Norwich need people with bite in their teams. I think that's so probably that. the word I would use to describe um, bite. Stephen Naismith. He, he niggles. He's yeah. good at that. I just, I just still, I just think that there's three players in the queue ahead of Stephen Naismith, and let's deal with the facts. At the weekend, he scored, and then he got sent off. And the bottom line is, if we're up against the wall again next season, trying to push into the playoffs, has Stephen is Stephen Naismith going to wait? And not is he actually going to deliver? I, I think we need players that are going to guarantee to deliver. I mean, let's move back to the Leeds game now. Um, it was a, a wonderful 45 minutes, wasn't it? And then they mm-hmm. got their goal back before half time. When that Chris Wood goal 
hit the back of the net. Were you expecting them to go on and score another two goals? I, I wasn't surprised when they did after that. I think we, we all thought that was a crucial goal in the game, a crucial time for it to go in just before half-time yeah. because it completely changed the mood of the ground. The place was packed. That was Leeds' big day. Yeah. Mm. And they were sh- shell-shocked at 3-0. And Norwich were well worth their lead. Yeah. At the front Could four, be more as well, They were it? fantastic. Yeah, mm, they, they were brilliant. It, it's among the best 45 minutes of football I've seen from, from Norwich this season. But you've said that so many times this season as well. Yeah. The amount of times I've I've looked at Chris's Twitter account at half time, there must have been five or six tweets yeah. which says that was the best forty five minutes of the football this season and then we go and buy well, it. Yeah, there we are, isn't that the problem? The best forty five mm. minutes, how often have we seen the best ninety? This is the problem we've yeah, got with Norwich go. City. There they, was that stat, wasn't there, that we've scored I think the most amount of goals in the championship in the first forty five minutes and then is it the least amount in the second forty five or something like yeah, that? There are all sorts of damning mm. um, stats mm. like that. Um and I think I'm not always one to, to pay a great deal of, of attention to raw statistics because we saw, don't forget, we saw Reading dominate the possession at Carrow Road yeah. recently and yeah. lose 7-1. So don't yeah. worry too much about statistics. But by the time you get to this point in the season, there are certain patterns that, that do speak for themselves. It doesn't lie. But I think I think it's a really delicate balancing act over the summer. And the, the Naismith issue is, is one of those that they've got to decide on because... Yes, we need Norwich to be tougher to beat next season. That's clear. We need them not to be the sort of team that can throw away two and three goal mm. leads routinely. But I don't want them to blunt what they've got as an attacking force because the potential is there. I mean, yeah. In all competitions this season, they're not going to be far off 100 mm. goals. Yeah. And not many teams manage that. So there is, there is something there in, in terms of going forward, getting goals, mm. then brilliant. We, we, we've got mm. the, the potential, we've got the capability to do that. How do we stop giving them away at the other end without blunting that yeah. is, is fascinating. But if you think back to August, when we started the season, yeah. the main concern of Norwich fans that I was getting, that we're getting on Canary Call, oh, we need to sign a striker, we haven't got enough yeah. firepower. Yeah. I remember, yeah. And that's proved to be completely wide yeah. yeah. so it, It's interesting. It shows that, that we know nothing. Well, <laughs> fans in general, it's interesting yeah. when you look back at, at what, what has been said at, at the time and then how things pan out. Actually, not having that extra striker probably hasn't been as much of an issue this season. Do you think it's almost... Going back to that kind of recruitment policy, is it's, it's a lot more exciting to sign a big money striker than it is a defender. Because you remember when we brought in Ivo Pinto, no one really knew who, who he was. He was a God, £2 million defender. Loved it, though. Now goes on, he is probably one of the best Norwich City players. On the flip side, Yannick Vilcher, £8 million, scored a lot of good goals at Wigan. Hmm. Now can't even get in the squad at Norwich no, City. So. Yeah, he's not really been given enough of a chance yet, though, is he? No, so you'd like to see him come back in. But to go back to what Chris is saying is that I think the the problem, and this is what I've kind of preached about my article for the EDP this week, is that I think a problem that Norwich have got is the whole team seem very disconnected. So in previous seasons, there seems to have been kind of a blended, fluent, in my opinion, more fluent style of football. Whereas the defence is just cast, it's like it's like a suicide mission. It's like, oh, you guys deal with it. It's fine. We're the attacking line. We're scoring loads of goals. You guys deal with it. I suppose the um, interesting thing is that you just raised that we've scored a lot of goals this season but also conceded a lot. You go back to Paul Lambert in the Championship and it was a similar kind of thing. You score one, we'll score two more. Yeah, but you know we've scored a lot of goals this season, we've also conceded a lot, but it was the same under Lambert to a certain extent. So what has changed from that time? But we didn't bottle it and we always believed and that's the key thing, Jack. Is that the key thing? And everyone at Carrow knew if we went two down... It would, it would almost almost felt like it was guaranteed to, to be 2-2. But what was different in that squad to now? Belief, was, belief. How do you create belief? Well, first and foremost, winning football matches. Second of all, recruiting the right type of players. Again, Paul Lambert will go, but we say this every single podcast. Paul Lambert recruited players. Well, Paul Lambert, we say Paul Lambert. Paul Lambert's team recruited. The type of players that had the fight and the spirit and not necessarily the talent. Now, Norwich have got the flip side. We've got a lot of talented footballers, but do they have the fight? If I'm up against Chris and Chris is the opposition player, I've got to knock him over. I've got to knock him over. And those Norwich players haven't got that anymore. Is that why I sit in the middle? (laughs) (laughs) There's no escape. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's the, that's it, that's the key thing is is the fight. And would you would you agree with that? Would you say I, it's as I, simple as that? Again, it, uh, yeah. In some ways, it is. But isn't it interesting that we're all sitting here worried? And, and one thing that you hear supporters say a lot is, well, "We've got to go up next season because then we lose our parachute payments and we won't have as much money." And of course, that's important. But if you look back at Norwich's recent history. You're sitting there longing for the Paul Lambert days, and a lot of people do. Well, don't forget, when he came to Norwich City, the club was League One. Was League One. It was Financial nearly £20 cost, million almost, pounds yeah. in debt. Mm. And without, despite not having big money or any money at mm. all to spend on transfers, Norwich managed to assemble the sort of squad that many people wish they had now. So 
I think those who are talking about new investment coming to the club and those who are talking about, well, we need more money, we need someone who's going to plan more money into the club, I think that's wide of the mark because it's what you do with that money that that counts. And Norwich's recent history, the last 10 years, will tell you that whenever they Mm. have had a pot full of money to go and spend... They don't spend it wisely. They don't spend... Things don't go well. Through Norwich City history, the best signings they've ever made, almost without exception, have been players from lower divisions who haven't cost a great deal of money. And that's what I feel we need to get back to. Mm. So... I'm not so worried about the, the, the loss of parachute payments or the potential of, of, of Norwich not being a rich club anymore. Because, stability. Yeah, I, I really okay. think that there's, it's not... If you want to win the Premier League and you mm. want to compete, you want to get in the Champions League, then yes, you do need someone with loads of money to help you get those players. If you want to build a team that's going to be successful in the Championship, and that's what we need to do now, yeah. it's not about money. It really mm. isn't. Look I at Villa this season. It's yeah, just not about money. Very true. Very I suppose true. the frustration from Norwich City fans is... The, the fact we've had money and then wasted that money. I think mm. it, with anything in life, when you waste resources, that's yeah. a very kind of frustrating I th- thing. I think it all stemmed from the wolf, didn't it, really? I think they kind of got a wee bit scared. That, was, that, that seemed the turning point, didn't it, yeah. where we were like, yeah, we are going to go but out it, and get one of yeah. Europe's best strikers, yeah. which he was regarded as at the time. Just, it was that desperately unlucky, though, isn't it? Because we were obviously then, before the year before that, we were allegedly in for Benteke, and look at how that could have gone for us. So, unfortunately, we were just a wee bit late. I do believe that if you're in the Premier League... You've got to take a gamble on some players. You've got to chuck some money at a big striker, a good defender, which was our Tim Close, who, by the way, did play well in the in the Premier League. So, you know, it's, it's well, amazing. yeah, but it didn't just end in that that summer with Van Wolfswinkel and, and Fair, did it? Let's let's go back to last course, January. Fair, yeah. You know, Norwich were well, Norwich last January. I think the start of January was six points above the Premier League relegation zone. They were above Chelsea in the table, and this is only this is yeah. not this oh, is yeah. eight, this is not even eighteen months mm. ago. How did it get worse? And that January, they did spend big money. They went and signed Naismith. They went and signed closer mm. Evo Pinto. I think Patrick Bamford came in on loan. That, that would have <laughs> yeah. cost money. Oh and we all and again yeah. we all sat there thinking, Wow, yeah. that's it. Yeah, no, no, those did. are the players. Did, yeah. Those will guarantee that we stay yeah. up. And again, Norwich spent big money, and it didn't work. So it. Yes, Ricky Van Wolfsman calls mm. the obvious arguments, but there have been so many over the years yeah, that yeah. that's why I've come to this conclusion that actually uh, Norwich City are a club that historically do better when they, they have to be a bit more careful mm. about where, where they're spending the money. And we've changed the recruitment team already, and well, that's yeah, the most important uh, again, thing. We've the, already made some positive steps. You're right. I think it's you come back to the thing I said a moment ago that what's gone before has gone before. You've mm. got to worry about what next. And yeah. the board, everybody at the club has taken fair amount of criticism this season and rightly so because yeah, agreed, Norwich yeah. are, are not where they should be we all think they should be higher but rather than sitting around wondering what to do they have made changes yes. they've they've changed the way that they, they, mm-hmm. they do transfers there's going to be a new head coach Alex Neil lost his job mm-hmm. so the areas that have been ripe for criticism this season they've moved to do something about whether or not that's going to work mm-hmm. only time no. will tell we're going to have to sit back I think it's we might have to stomach point, though. yeah I think we might have to stomach no, things don't often work overnight like that. Don't say another season. So, no, 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 I'm not saying another season. I'm just saying we might just have to just be patient. Yeah. And I know that's things that that's something mm. the football fans aren't good at. But it's not all going to happen this summer, uh, certainly. No, it's I don't. Be I really don't think it is. As well. Of course. Yeah. I mean, let's talk about the big news from today. It's currently Tuesday when we're recording this, um, and the news broke about midday today that seven players are going to be released. Two players have been given new contracts or that one-year extension. I suppose the notable names from that: John Ruddy. Ryan Bennett, maybe, yeah, and I suppose the rest of them. Rob Butler will be in tears, won't he? <laughs> <laughs> he does like Ryan Bennett, doesn't he? He loves Ryan Bennett. Um, Sorry, Rob. What do you make of it? I expected think good or uh, yeah. I think well, let, let's face it. Yes, it is expected because Stuart Webber has said that there are going to be changes. I'm going to change a lot of the playing squad. The supporters have said we need a, a dramatic change of playing squad. To do that, you need to free up money for wages and transfer fees. Mm-hmm. Who are the easiest players to get rid of? Those that are out of contract. Yeah. So yeah. I think the seven players whose contracts happen to be up now are, I won't say unlucky because they've been paid handsomely for their troubles while at Norwich, but yeah. they are in a position that, okay, it doesn't matter what you've done for Norwich before, you are now the easiest people to get off the wage bill. Mm. Um, had John Ruddy got another year in his contract and, I don't know, Michael McGovern's contract been up this summer, mm. you may have seen that decision go the other way. So, yeah, I'm, I'm not really surprised by it because I think if Norwich are going to do serious transfer business mm. this summer, they yeah. need to start now. And the quickest and easiest way of getting players off the wage bill and getting things moving is saying, right, you lot are out of contract. Thank and you and, and to, to, to go on to that is everyone has been like, oh my God, John Ruddy. But I think, first of all, I think it's certainly time that John moved on. I really do. Um, and I also believe that we need to recruit a new goalkeeper anyway. I think we've been struggling there. Me and Chris were speaking before we went live about, you know, 
how good was Fraser Forster? How good was Fraser Forster? He was extraordinary. And and and, and since I mean, don't get me wrong, Ruddy from League One to the Premier League, those three seasons, he was brilliant. Yeah. Big John Ruddy, and he had a really great affiliation with the crowd. And for me personally, as a goalkeeper, I, I see that as quite important. I mean, I always hear about the gunny days where he used to head the crossbar and pull a Mooney at the Barkley and that kind of thing. And I actually think we need a bit more of that. And I think as well, one of the things we've really lacked is a goalkeeper that commands his box very well and commits to decisions. And obviously, Mickey McGovern's not big enough. Unfortunately, you shouldn't judge a goalie like that, but that's the kind of the reality of of it. And I think it's time that that John moved on. I mean, them seven players that have been released, I think have played over 700 games for Norwich City. So you could go back to the whole Naismith argument of we're releasing experience. Is that a valid argument or do you think... Well, it's a balance, Time's isn't it? We're, we're releasing some experience, but we haven't let, we haven't said right. If you played more than two hundred games, you automatically go. I think it's you've got to keep a balance, and, and that's mm. what's been wrong with Norwich all season: the balance between defence and attack, the balance between yeah. youth and experience. Uh, I'm certainly not going to criticise John Ruddy. I, I don't think he's had a particularly vintage season. I've, he said that in interviews himself. Mm. But you know, to mm. be Norwich's number one goalkeeper for seven years is some achievement. And you look at all the, the goalkeepers that have come and gone in that time. And some have had a little spell in, in the first team. Mm. Some have never yeah, made it in the first the team. Day, and they've it? always gone back to John Ruddy. So I think he... Well, I'm really pleased that this news has come out before the last game of the season because... Fans can show their yeah, respect. Yeah, S- seven players can... Mm. Thank the Carroll Road crowd mm. and vice versa, but mainly John Ruddy. He's been there longer yeah. than any of them. He not, deserves the chance to say yeah, goodbye. Yeah, I totally agree. And I'm not. I'm not. I'm definitely not criticising John. Um, I, I'm merely just saying that I feel like it's the right time, yeah. and it's the right time for quite a few players. And actually, there's other players in there that haven't been released today, which I feel is the right time for them to move on as well. So I do agree with Chris. I hope that we give John a good reception, but I hope he gives the Norwich fans a good reception as well, because I feel of late that that affiliation hasn't been there. I suppose another talking point is almost the ruthlessness from Stuart Webber, because I think previous CEOs or whoever you want to call it, the people who make these decisions could have been maybe lured into this kind of sentimental value of the likes of Ryan Bennett, John Ruddy. Do you see that as, as a progression forward? Because Stuart Webber's come in, he sacked three members of staff. Ricky Martin's been here for well over 10 years. That couldn't have been easy. Players as well who've been here for nearly that, that long. Ricky shouldn't have been put in his position anyway. No, I know, but what I'm saying is, as a, as a human mm. being, it's quite tough to sack someone. At his on. age, and I think he's, I actually think it's more about the fact that he's just switched on. And I also think that Delia and Michael have had a bigger role to play. Everyone's like, oh, Stuart Webber's ruthless. There's no way he would have just turned up and gone, you're sacked, you're sacked, without Delia's say-so. And I think that Delia and Michael and the board have probably decided that it's time for a lot of people to move on. Um, so obviously Stuart's heading it up, but he doesn't need to have this cloud over him that he's the next Dave McNally. What have you made of Stuart Webber so far? Uh, I've not met him yet, actually. Um, he's done a couple of, of interviews, but he will be judged on how this summer goes. He, he will, and we're only at the start of that process now. But he, he's certainly a man who means business. I think it's all very well to talk about him being ruthless, but the fact is he wouldn't be in a job at Norwich City unless big decisions needed to be made. <laughs> yeah, it's very true. You know, if things hadn't gone wrong under Alex Neil, then Alex Neil will still be the manager, Stuart Webber would probably still be at Huddersfield. Yeah. So he's been brought in to do a job. Um, how much, you know, who's making what decisions behind the scenes, it, that's the great part of football that we, we will never know. But you, it, it's interesting mm. that when something happens that, we talked to Rob Butler about this the other day actually on the way to Leeds, when, when something happens that fans like, they tend to say, oh good old Webber. When, when, <laughs> yeah. when something happens that fans don't He's like, they say, boy, they say, oh well Dealing's made that's that true. decision. Yeah. And, <laughs> and, and it, I think, the truth is probably somewhere in between. I think it is a, as we saw with the the departure of Alex Neal, it is a it is a club that's run with not one person having to say so. They do like to make decisions as a board, as a team, and so that's why you never get any clarity in terms of mm-hmm. this person's made this decision. But clearly, in terms of the players that are not being kept on, those that are. Stuart Webber is the man who's been charged with putting those mm. decisions to the board. I assume they then have to be ratified. Yeah, but of but he's the he, he is the man who's been mm. brought in because the squad squad needs and, an overhaul. That's and, his job, and it's what Chris has said about you know Stephen Naismith being a leader on the pitch. We need leaders off the pitch. It's been far too long that I feel like the the staff around the football club have kind of taken a step back, and now Stuart Webber's in people's faces and he's making important decisions and we need leaders off the pitch. Definitely. Um, Let's move on to our weekly feature, Moan of the Week. So this is something that, you know, us us Norfolk people like to moan about anything. Football, 
I mean, you, you so are. Why is it only one moan of the week? We have if, mo- if it's a proper moans North Island, yeah. yeah. Bit on Canary Call. Right, moans changed this week. Moans. Yeah. Um, Chris, you want to start? Um, I'm okay actually. Chris has got two oh, moans. No, at least. no I, I'm just. I mean, you've been on a, a five-hour trip up to Leeds. Oh yeah. Moans of the week. I saw Michael Bailey post a photo of the the gantry. Not a great view. Uh, not for him. We were uh, a level uh, up above Michael. I've got a moan. My moan of the week is um, all of the fans that um, piped up. There's this guy called um, at Jack Reeve TNC on Twitter, <laughs> right? And you wouldn't believe it. He tweeted me when Naismith scored, saying, "Absolute worldy. Why would you want to get rid of him?" And I thought, oh, "That's my moan of the week. It's a shame that people have to put themselves out there before you know the final whistle." So that's yeah. my moan of the week. People who make rash decisions. Before the final <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe. I hate football fans who make rash decisions. Yeah. That's, what, that's what it's all about. Though, um, I think, what would I say, moans of the week? I think, shall I do a broad football one? Yeah, yeah go, go on, on then. I think I'm getting a bit tired of the arguments that keep coming up about need, the need for video technology. Okay. Um, because mm, I think, yes, because it's just been going on for so long. And yeah. I think, yes, yeah. there is a need for it. But I would only use it for things that are definite, i.e. was that ball over the over line? line? Was yeah. that player offside? My, my issue is, I heard somebody talking about it earlier this week, and they then went on, the two or three people who were on that programme, then went on to disagree as to whether, I think it was the Harry Kane one was a penalty or not. Oh. So, you know, things like that you can watch again and again yeah. and still yeah. come to a different decision. So I think if you're going to use yeah. it, let's use it because mm-hmm. it's needed, mm-hmm. but only for things that are definite facts. Otherwise, it's still well, going to be a matter step, of opinion. That's step one anyway, isn't it? To surely just integrate it with the yeah. facts mm. and then you might incorporate it into other things. But anyway, we don't want yeah. to into My moment of the week is it. Spurs fans who think they made Harry Kane because they're forgetting about <laughs> his loans called Norwich City. Yeah, very true. Did they watch him in a League Cup game against Doncaster Rovers on a Tuesday night when he got about three touches of the ball? I loved it Doubt when he it. was one, we were playing West Ham and mm. he went one-on-one with the keeper and absolutely skied it. Yeah. Let's they're not just... forget, he was, he was the man taken off at half-time when we were playing Luton in the FA Cup, oh my God. he was part of that. He was part of that team knocked out the <laughs> FA Cup by non-league Luton. The thing is with Harry Kane is I still can't work out how he's a good striker. There's, Why? No, there's nothing about him it's where all I go. About the goals that he's got. No, I mean how. Except, except for the goals. <laughs> okay, right. It's like Lukaku, quick, pacey. Harry Kane hasn't got any like amazing. Well, he's Shearer. He's, he's you know he's, he's very good. He's got Alan Shearer's kind of attributes, isn't he? I think look, he's he's powerful. Hang on, hang on. I think we can drop the is Harry Kane any good argument. <laughs> yeah. I know he wasn't that good for Norwich City, but he's he has okay. that that uh, that ship has sailed. Jack. Okay, okay. So we'll leave that. So basically, yeah, okay. that, so basically, our moans of the week aren't really moans of the week. <laughs> Section done. All right, things we're excited about for the week then, because we need to balance it out. I'm excited that Seb Basong's gone. Is that oh, harsh? Is a He's a player of the season. Barry, yeah. Barry was that his first season or his second season? First by the way? season, I think, yeah. Yeah, so first season, got to play the season, and then cursed, and then was pretty bad. So you're excited about seeing the back of Sebastian A hundred percent. He's like, I've, I've said it before, I'll say it again, it's like dragging caravan through 500 yards of mud. He just can't run for toffee. I'm sorry. Okay. And I'm happy to see the back of a lot of... Actually, it's not just Basong. Let me, let me not be harsh, because he was fantastic in his first season under Hewton. World beater, the big bass. But... I won't go that far. There's a lot of Deadwood, and I'm delighted to see the beginning of some of the Deadwood. And this is just the beginning. I still think there's going to be a few players in there very worried, very sweaty palms, going to the end of this season, thinking, I'm going to have... I tell you what, we're definitely going to win at the weekend, aren't we? Because they're all going to be playing for their contracts. It's brilliant. Who Absolutely knows? brilliant. It's exciting. That's my hype of the week. Cool. You seem very excited. Dead wood. Chris, any... oh, yeah, I'm excited about I'm excited about the end of the season. <laughs> I know that's I'm a really good thing. Obviously, yeah, everyone said that. About... All of our yeah. guests have said that. I can't, can't wait for the end of this season. Yeah, you can't help it, can you? I think it's... It, this is the, I think it's the earliest that Norwich's season has finished for about five or six years. Yeah. Because we're not in playoffs and we're not in the Premier mm. League anymore. So being having the season all done by the 7th of May, I think we all need a break from it. I really do. Because yeah, not everyone. just the travelling to the away games, but I think it's been such a disappointing season. Mm. It's been a real emotional ups and downs because we've been good, then we haven't been good. I think we need a break from it. But we need to get to that point where we're missing it again. And we need to start getting yeah. itchy feet on a Saturday. Oh, really, yeah. And by the time the first game of next season mm. comes around, we'll all be up for it. So, yeah, I'm excited by a, 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 yeah. a football-free summer. Lovely. It's like Mike Manson, mm. shout out Mike, who's got his new season ticket for next season. He really wants it. Mm. And I think there's a lot of fans that have forgotten that... The privilege. The smell, the smell of the, the <laughs> freshly cut grass... <laughs> You know, 500 foot away from you at the Barclay, like that's what it's all about. Getting to Carrow Road, and we've lost a lot of that. My second, I can I have a second hype. Yeah, go for James it. James Madison. 
You, oh <laughs> my god, James Madison! I just I love how we've I seen him for like ten minutes this season. Everyone care. thinks yeah, he's going to be yeah, the yeah, yeah. man who like, leads he, us to glory. Everyone's like, "Oh, he's only had three touches, Chris." I don't care. <laughs> I think the guy has got serious potential. He's got all the right attributes, and I'm so excited to see him playing relatively regular football for Norwich next season. Okay, not sure if I'm excited about anything to be honest. What? Go on, Jack. A cup of coffee was good. Um, Some chocolates here. Well, you were harder than up, weren't well, you? I can't. That's because of it's my BBC background. I've got to show the logo. Ah, uh, okay. Can we just get this on camera? Other chocolate for Rob? bars are you, available. Chris, would you like this bar of chocolate? Well, I'll take it for Rob. <laughs> you love um, it. Am I excited about anything? Um, come on, Jack. You've got to be. Come on. Um, Have I not in Stuart Webber? I'm, I, I love the yeah. guy. I'm excited about the, yeah, the Webber excited. effect. The Webber revolution. Oh yeah. That's the it. Webolution <laughs> is here, and I'm still excited. Oh my god. No. Um, anyway, is let's move on. Yeah. Web, I think it is oh, actually. Is it? Yeah, I think yeah. we need to get that going. You know what? You know what? Another moan of the week is for me. Oh no! Is that we still can't see the big screen? We live in 2017, and they haven't figured out a way to slightly rotate it a bit more so the lower Bartley can see it. Yes. Can I just say we have say, been missing the graphics on that all season? No, I'm right. Yes, we have, and I, that should have been my hype of the week. I sat in the NMP the other week. It's fantastic that big screen. <laughs> no, seriously, the graphics, the way it moves. Oh, the way, I, the way I it see, moves? What do you mean? It's like this. No, no at the, before the game, where it goes inside and there's all sorts of flashy images and it's great. Okay. Absolutely brilliant. I want to be able to see the big screen next season. Anyway, we went to you guys on Twitter and asked for some questions for Chris. Um, I suppose you might want to put this on the CV. The most ever responses to one of these. Really? It was really? over 50 oh, questions. That, yeah, excellent. Get that in the CV. You'll have to um, ask them all. How many can I pass? Uh, <laughs> can, I, can, I, can we ask questions first before the other questions? Go on then. Don't make sure there's no do you don't ask any that have already been asked. I, I, I doubt it. Go on, I doubt ask it. My it. question is has there ever been a time where you've really 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 wanted to swear or have you oh. actually sworn on air? <laughs> have I sworn? For example, has an Ipswich player kind of gone into the back of the Norwich player and you've stood up and you've gone <laughs> and you've gone oh I can't say it. I don't think I've not intentionally sworn on air. Yeah. Anyway, I think I accidentally said a player was <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. Where's this going? Who was I, think, it? I can't remember the game. Who was the it, it was it was in the Neil Adams era. Okay. Oh. And I and it was a f- opposition Classic. player and it was at Carrow Road and I described a player as erotic when I meant erratic. <laughs> I meant erratic. I meant erratic for the record. But there may be there's something going on that in my mind. Is that, like the that. Best it was a night game under time. floodlights. I said, yeah, I, it was erotic. a winger and I said he's had quite an erotic I mean erratic <laughs> game. But I don't remember who it was. Oh, or what that's it. brilliant. That well, maybe if you've been watching Wes Hulahan you, you, you might no, describe that. I would describe Wes as a very erotic player. Anyway, let's move on to some of the questions. Getting hot Scoops. <laughs> um, asking the big one, why did the Radio Norfolk commentary position move from, to the gantry from the city stand? Um, well, I would say that I'm, I'm, you know, I'm genuinely interested that people are interested in that sort of thing. Because <laughs> it, it all sounds the same on the radio, sure. Well, I suppose is maybe that... some people used to sit <laughs> yeah. right next to you. No, I'll, I'll, I'll is tell it you what to it do is. with Roy? Uh, no, the, the traditional three seats above the tunnel is and will always, hopefully, will always be the Roy Waller commentary box, named yes. after the great man, yeah. and, and rightly so. What happens is, it, it's a lot more boring than you might expect. What happens is, every few years, Norwich City and BBC have to do a deal so that we're allowed to commentate on matches. When they sit down and have those discussions, everything gets talked about in terms of where we're going to broadcast from, and they've got a lovely new gantry they've had for the last mm. two or three seasons. So you might be released stand. this summer then. <laughs> well, exactly. <laughs> you might be out, you might be well, with Carl Laverty. We're, we're all the same, <laughs> we're all like that. Um, <laughs> we've definitely got next season, so oh, I'll okay, tell you sorry. that. So I'm all right for next season. Um, and we got the chance to go and have a look at what the view was like from the gantry, and it's quite simple. It's better, yeah. because it's higher up. Mm, yeah. and, and you can move. You can move. <laughs> that, uh, a few people may have... Um, been on ground tours and seen those three seats above the tunnel. It's so tight, yeah. and you had to. I think the only way of getting into it was to climb over a barrier from the back. And it, I did once split a pair of perfectly good trousers. No, <laughs> I hope you claimed that on BBC expenses. I, I tried, you but tried. I, they turned it down because you know license pays money, and rightly so. It's my own <laughs> fault. So um, yeah, I split a pair of trousers climbing into there. So it's simple. The, the position we're in now, better view, better view to commentate from, and um, the facilities are just better, and you can get more people in there. So yeah, we're we're happy where we are. I must you. admit, nothing from, sinister. I I was obviously lower Barclay, Jack. I, I love the atmosphere. Don't get me wrong, but I actually really like to be in the upper Barclay because you do get that kind of almost bird's eye view. Yeah, really, yeah. You can under, you can appreciate the tactics more. Yeah, definitely. Whereas low is all about the pace of the game. Um, Robson asked, "How did you get involved in radio broadcasting?" 
Um, Did you I, make the tea? I, yeah, pretty much. I just <laughs> made made enough of a nuisance of myself. Um, <laughs> I've worked out. I don't know what you boys are like at playing football. I've seen some of the videos of you, Jack. I hope the I hope the better ones. Okay, right. I was I was never any good. So, but I was a massive football fan. I was obsessed by football growing up. I was the sort of person that would have my um, Panini sticker album confiscated mm. by the teacher on a weekly basis. So, you know, that was, that was my life. School. Well, only, not really, only from that, <laughs> only from stickers. And, um, yeah. And Jack's I got some stickers, if you want some, by the way. Have yeah, you, have you've you got, got to buy them. Though. Plug. Plug? No, my own them. stickers. Oh, your own stickers. Yeah. Well, not, none of your old Norwich City players ones. Um, I used to collect shootout cards. Um, shoot out cards. Yeah, this is a laugh. Do you know shoot out cards? No, Do you not? My time. See no. now they're now I called match attacks. Oh, I know match attacks. So they were the yeah. the previous. So right. I was, I probably sound quite old. It's all about yeah. Merlins. Yeah. Um, I was never a sticker man because I could never stick them in straight. Oh uh, dear. So dear. I was a card man. Yeah. Um, so yeah. anyway, I grew up football obsessed, Norwich City obsessed, and worked out pretty quickly that the only way to make a living out of football was not going to be playing it, was to do something else. And yeah, I Could always you... love listening to football commentary mm-hmm. on the radio, mm-hmm. and I worked out at quite an early age that hang on a minute there's people that is a job that you yeah. can do and um, yeah I just hung around Radio Norfolk for long enough doing various different jobs until they said oh mm. you, you seem to have been around a long time do you want to go to football commentary yeah. <laughs> and that's it, it, there's nothing more to it than that started from the bottom <laughs> there's really nothing more to it than and that. could you imagine it without him no could I you imagine could, without because him because I've never heard anyone <laughs> and I love that and I have to say thanks because the amount of memories that we've had over the especially the last few seasons the derby, obviously, mm. the Ipswich wins. There's just there's so many games of football that you wouldn't remember without your. Well, I've been, I've been really lucky because I I took over from Roy uh, doing the away games first of all when Norwich were relegated from the Premier League in 2005, and yeah. in the years since we've had so many ups and downs. It's not been boring, has it? I think. Yeah, true. I think the last the ten years previous to that were very. There was when they got promoted with Huckabee and all that was yeah. great. There was the playoff final under Nigel Worthington, but not much else in ten years. So I've been. I've been really lucky that the my initial spell as Norwich City commentator has coincided with That's interesting, with everything. Yeah. So I'm yeah, you're you're only I've been a in a way it's nothing to do with me as a commentator. In my time at Radio Norfolk, I've been a League One commentator and I've been a Premier League commentator, and it's nothing to do with me. It's to do with those people on the pitch. They te- they can take us up to the Premier League. Will you be a European commentator one. one day with Norwich City? Yeah. Hopefully. Oh, will you? No, I don't know about me. I, my only life goal is to watch Norwich in Europe. That's the really? only thing I want. Once that's happened, yeah, that is, a, that is a thing that Jack always says. I've already started saving for it for the. Okay. For the do you think, it'll happen? Do you think it'll happen? Yes, convinced it will. I think we might win the League Cup and get in that way. Yeah. I don't care how we get in it. I just hope we do. <laughs> also, were you a person in like school and stuff that? Collected like all the stats. Were you like a spud? You he loved said he, doesn't, no, he said he doesn't like stats. No, I'm not. He not killed really. you on the Naismith stats. I did. So. Oh god. Uh, yeah, I, but... I've got now. I've. I say I like facts, and not stats. What's so, the difference? <laughs> <laughs> the difference would be. Ah, uh, that's a yeah. How do you put, words yeah. instead of numbers? Maybe. So you would say Stephen Naismith has scored more goals than words. Stephen oh, Naismith. Okay. Stephen Naismith has okay. been sent off. Yeah. So for that, another fact. Okay. Yeah. But like yeah, it's some, because I delivered. think now with stats, I mentioned the possession ones earlier, and you get these ones that come up now. They tell you how far a player's run. There's only one that matters. You're not a fan of that. There's only one stat that matters. No, I'm not a fan of that. Do you know why? Well, because that that all that running he's done might have been chasing after other people who've got <laughs> yeah, the ball. Yeah. So it doesn't mean that he's yeah. done well. Steve and also, and I will, I can I mention? Am I allowed to mention Michael Bailey? Have you had him on this yet? We haven't. We you tried to do. get him because we will. Michael does put, and I have, I have had a laugh about this with Michael. He um, posts up some stats post match on Twitter, and I don't know if you ever looked at them, but it's got shots on Twitter. Goals are the third thing. On the oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're, they're, I think I can't remember what the two above it are, but it's something like um, shots and shots on target, and then oh, goals, yeah. which to me should be most the most important. You know thing. what? But they're not Michael. He gets them off some website yeah. somewhere. So I would love it. Could you imagine if likes of Chris, Michael, Rob? Or had like a WhatsApp, like a group WhatsApp group, where they're like, they just have like alternative commentary and alternative facts. <laughs> we sort of do. It's like, do you really? <laughs> Brilliant. Like draw, like draw on Chris's face, or you know, you know yeah. that kind of banter. Maybe they do. Maybe. Yeah. Hopefully, yeah, no, I've not been invited into it. <laughs> Jazzy Green asks, which ground has the best view from the press box? Well, now it's Norwich. Is it? Yeah, it really is. Wow, but, wow. but that's not the press box. Well, we're winning the something. Then. Yeah. Is there so a I would say that. Um, oh, where else has been good? Wembley, what was that like? Uh, Wembley was, yeah, it was good, but you're slightly not on the halfway line at Wembley. Oh. So you, you want to be halfway along, quite high up, looking down. Most grounds are pretty good. QPR? QPR's 
Now, QPR is an interesting one because I think every time I've been to QPR, I've been somewhere it? different. And oh. this year, they put us in a position where we are away from the rest of the press on a gantry. But it's so... Because that ground is like a shoebox. It's so tight mm. to the pitch. When you're standing at the front of the gantry, you're, you are on top of the pitch. You can't mm. see when someone's taking a throw in underneath. Yeah, that's why I said it. So, I remember it from yeah, last time. Somebody disappeared. You a picture of it or something And suddenly like the that, ball yeah. appears and you think, oh, it must have been a throw. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, that was... Uh, now, were you doing the... Galston commentary, or was that Rob? No, that's Rob. Rob was on the roof. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rob, like Rob, t- Rob talks oh, yeah, a lot. We that yeah. one, we? Rob yeah. talks a lot about how um, he got a touch of the ball during that game. That's uh, one of Rob's stories. He's claimed to fame. Yeah, he got a touch of the ball during that game. That's quite cute, isn't it? Toby asks favorite player over the last five years. Favorite player. Oh, so hang on, I've got to get my timings right here. So where are we now? So that takes us back to 2012. You agree with that? Yeah. Favorite player. Well, there are the obvious ones, aren't there? That just about takes in a bit of Grant Hole. We'll give you top three. Let's later. take let, not the obvious ones. Give us an the a, player obscure that, one. The player that I most enjoy watching now is Johnny Howson. Okay. I would have pre- I would have predicted that Chris was going to say that. Yeah. <laughs> Why is that? Because he's just so, he's so a man consistent. Of fact. He seems like he doesn't yeah, have it's like yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's like you know Johnny Howson will deliver. Yeah, yeah. So Chris I like, will say I that. I do like Johnny Howson. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I would I would say over the last five years there've been so many. Is there a player that? Norwich fans didn't really like that you actually had a bit of a soft spot for where you had to be a bit neutral um, well you're always, you're always neutral with all of them I think um, not on this podcast well no I, I think what I, I I always think having a favourite player is a bit that's the sort of thing like, you do when you're at school like Dejan Stevanovic or something like that <laughs> that's a good one and so players that we've had on Jim Brennan on, uh, Jim Brennan was alright there was a guy called John Kennedy do you remember him yeah we had on loan from Matty, Celtic Matty Patterson any no, interest? well John Kennedy I thought Look, uh, looked the part until he, got, he kept getting injured but I noticed we were watching the old firm derby yeah. um, in the press room at Leeds on Saturday and he's now one of the Celtic coaches oh, he was there getting uh, the subs ready so there's a I was pleased oh, to see him okay. I think he could have been a good player but yeah. we'll never know and isn't Graham Murphy now something to do with Rangers he's at Rangers he, yeah, yeah. He, didn't he manage he them did he was caretaker games, yeah. manager yeah. interesting um, Matt best and worst Norwich moments um, I guess this is that, this is lifetime I can I extend on to this question go on then is there a moment where you've commented on Norwich where you've genuinely thought I don't think I can do this anymore <laughs> no no seriously I think, like, yeah, I has think... there been a real like oh my god what am I doing it's cold <laughs> it's wet I've travelled six hours away I don't want to do this anymore I think you can't if you're going to watch Norwich City and come to Norwich City you cannot then start complaining that it's a long way from everywhere because that's a given you know that <laughs> yeah, before well, you start yeah. Yeah. so it's not that I think in terms of the best moment that playoff final when the second goal went in oh, yeah. from Nathan Redmond, that's the, when commentating that I got <laughs> yeah, a genuine that was, head that was I still get like I got, yeah, yeah, I got yeah. a genuine while I was commentating. I was thinking, well, you have to be careful here, Chris, because I got it felt that's my out, yeah. I, really? yeah, I did. I really? That's the only time it's ever Do you happened. You think you're going to stack it? That's the only time it's <laughs> you ever happened. You honestly thought you were going to fall yeah, over. I thought I suddenly got. <laughs> oh my we God. were sitting down, and I suddenly. And it, I've done so many games over the years, and it didn't happen with the first Wembley goal, but that mm. second one so soon yeah. afterwards, I might, you almost felt the blood rushed up. Mm. I've, I've never felt it at a football match before. So that was a bit scary, but we, but I didn't pass your, out. But that's your best <laughs> moment anyway. So that was the best moment. But worst, worst moment. I suppose this question should be biggest health scare. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, how, what would be Because that worst? applies to both, doesn't it, obviously? So. Yeah, yeah. Worst moments with Norwich. Well, I was there commentating when they went down to League One for the what, first time. In what three, Fulham six nil. That league. was bad. But I tell you what, where it did, what did get me is being at Elland Road in 1995. Right, okay. <laughs> okay. Sorry, can we just before I was born? Okay, I was two years yeah, old. Okay. Well, I was 13 years old. But I'd only been 13 for about two or three days. Okay. Because I have the situation where my birthday's right at the end of the season. <laughs> right. So that can be, it can really improve your birth date because mm. Norwich City have won, the, won a league title on my birthday before. Okay. They've oh, also wow. just about been relegated on my birthday. <laughs> Happy birthday. And this, was, and this was Leeds United, 1995. I went as an away fan. I was just 13 and Norwich lost and that relegated them. And it was the first time in my Norwich City watching career that they were no longer in the top flight. That was when I had to come to terms with, hang on, this isn't. they're not always going to be a yeah. top flight team. Yeah, I was like, lucky. I grew up in, that realisation? Yeah. Years, I grew up in the late 80s, early 90s, which was peak. Yeah, season. yeah, of course. No, yeah. yeah. And Europe I, and everything. And Europe, yeah, Europe, I've been there, done that. We've seen them finish I'm fourth. I'm so I've seen them finish fourth in the top flight. I've yeah. seen them finish third in the top flight. By the way, but we yeah, bottled that as well. Yeah, we did. But you have to remember. <laughs> well, I've seen this finish third in the Premier League with a minus four goal difference <laughs> <laughs> so that Classic takes Norwich. a day. but yeah. and you think when that when those are your first few years supporting Norwich you tend you can't imagine mm. them not being in the top flight and then suddenly 
they're not and it's it takes a it comes as a real mm. hammer blow that your team that I think, oh it does I yeah. have to say as well a lot of Norwich fans are going to go through what Chris went through then because there's a lot of young mm. Norwich fans now that have joined in that massive stint that League One Premier League Premier League Premier League Premier League, Premier League, Premier League, Premier League. Mm. whereas Chris has been right down the depths and darknesses and we've right. experienced yeah. that pain <laughs> well it's true isn't it's it true. it's yeah. true it's true it's a fact it's a fact, it's a fact. It's it's a fact. It's yeah, a fact. yeah. It's it took me it took me 13 years get this to question do this question do this question right now Jack okay so James who is always interacting now I think we've got to be a bit careful with this question. Do He's it? asked the best and worst player interviewed and also the best and worst manager interviewed. Go all in, Chris. Just now, you in. never interview the opposition, do you? Not very often. No. So, we are solely You're speaking... You're talking about Norwich. Norwich players here. Well, I would... Now, I'm going to come at this from a, a self-critical angle and okay. I'm, going to see that, I'm going to say that a bad interview isn't always the fault of the person being asked the questions. Oh, no, that's, that's nice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so that's if nice. if I come away from an interview and it hasn't gone particularly well and I haven't got much of any great note out of it, mm. much of any great interest out of it, then it's probably as much to do with the quality of the questions that have been asked okay. as to what the player has said. So I would say that. I w- all I'll say is that if you, um, I can talk on the radio, but if you put me one-on-one with the goalkeeper in front of the Barclay in the final minute of a championship match... I wouldn't know what to do. Yeah. So it's unfair to expect footballers and football managers to all be brilliant. That's, right. That's a good you see? point. Yeah, many like of that. them are. Many of them are really comfortable in front of a microphone. Mm. Russell Martin. Mm. Others, you get the microphone out and they try and run a mile. Mm. Where's who that? You know, he's do- he does yeah, not like doing yeah, media. True. So, but but I don't hold that against him because yeah. there, there are lots of things in life that I'm not comfortable doing. Sorry, just I just heard Russell Martin come out of Chris Gorn's mouth. So, Russell Martin, he's got to stay at the football club, hasn't he? I don't see any reason why he's he should go. Yeah, he's great. It'd be he's, silly to get rid of him. But well, having to sit here and, and talked for so long about needing leaders, and he's the captain at the moment, then it, I would, it would then be hypocritical of me to say... That's, what, that's one one, Naismith. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> um, James, if you could commentate with anyone in the world that you haven't <clears throat> sat next to already, who would it be and why? Wow, that's a good question. So you're talking about a former player who has got to be a former player who... Yeah, I guess, or, or anyone, really. Celebrity, right. anyone. Well, let me tell you, who would you like to hear doing a game? Bear in mind... Yeah, should I tell you what I'd like okay, to let, hear? Okay, I'll give you the parameters. Okay. We're, we're, this, it's likely to be on Radio Norfolk, let's yeah. face it. Okay, you know, okay. Match the day, I haven't come calling yet. Yeah. So, it's going to be... <clears throat> it, we, we tend to like it to be a former Norwich player. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. who would you like it to be? Who would Mark you like Tierney. To, you like oh, what is your obsession with him? 100%. <laughs> Now, and I'd also like you to get him to do cartwheels whilst commentating. <laughs> what, from that gantry? Yeah. yeah. That's impressive. Now, you do realise I've given you the whole of Norwich City history to go at. Mark Tierney. And that's the level of your... Um, and that's nothing against Mark Tierney. Mm. You know, the ambition you've got is Mark Tierney. Yeah. What about you, Chris? I mean, to be honest, with you, I always, always love listening to Gunny. I just I love listening to Gunny. Something I something you haven't he's... heard, because Gunny's on, on there quite a lot. You're sorry? Gunny's on... Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. This is who's never done it. I think I'd, I'd love to... Is Dion, is Dion Dublin been on? He's no, he hasn't purely actually. because he's my favourite Norwich player. Yeah. Ever. So I love Dion. I love Dion. Yeah. Um, anyone with that kind of passionate fight, I just love to hear that. You know what? My I kind of got this bit of a thing right. I'd love to do some Frank Norwich City com- commentary. So basically, I have this thing like, could you imagine us through in, in the commentary box? Chris is being all Chris Gorham over it, saying, oh, it was a good clearance. And me and you were like, that was absolutely terrible. <laughs> like, really going in for it. I think that'd be fun. Okay. Mm. What about, what, can you imagine if Delia ever did a game? Oh, now that would be. Oh, can you imagine yes. hearing what that would be? Well, like? well, no, it'd start off quite well, and then obviously the sherry's <laughs> half time come in, and it all goes. <laughs> Delia. See, I've actually sat next to Delia at a football match. Before, yeah, you have. So I've pretty much yeah. heard her commentate over a game. I was at Southampton. We lost four two. I'd sat down. I think about five minutes had gone. There was two spare seats next to me. Mm-hmm. Delia comes in, sits next to me. Brilliant. And. Well, it was sorry. It, it was it was Delia. <laughs> Actually, I've so, sorry to go back to what I just said, but the the closest person, and I love to listen to it. Actually, more than Gunny, I'm relegating Gunny. Mark Rivers. Oh my <laughs> God, he's brilliant. Mm. He's brilliant. He's so good because he says it how it is, mm. and he's so like no, it just goes for it, and that's exactly what is refreshing to hear. I'd also quite like to hear Tim Close do one. Would you? Yeah. Okay. What you love? I tell you Close what. The moment. When when Norwich. Get into Europe in your dream in years to come. Yeah, and may, maybe we'll get drawn against a German or Swiss yeah, that, team. He might on. be. He may, he may be, it'll be some, he'll be retired by then, yeah. living in his log cabin on a snowy mountainside <laughs> with his chocolate, and we, yeah. we'll be able to get him on. Brilliant. When we get drawn against 
I'm trying to think of a Swiss team. Grasshopper Zurich. Oh, that would be good. So that's, be this nice is the Jack one. Reeve dream. Yeah. Europa League qualifying round in Love July. It. Who would be the ideal team for Mark Tierney to commentate over? Uh, he, went, he went to Bolton, didn't he? And he yeah. Colchester. We don't want to be in the same That's so dry. Can know. we not talk about Mark Well, well Bolton, <laughs> next year, we're going to be playing them. All right, I'll see what I can do. See what you can do. Lewis asks, what's the best thing about your job? P.S. Love your commentating. Appreciate all you do. Thank you, Lewis. It's all got a bit Steve Wright in the afternoon, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Love the show. Thanks, Lewis. Um, <laughs> best thing about my job? Well, I'm a Norwich fan, and... I get paid to watch Norwich. What? It's it's a fortunate position to be in. I, can't, it, I cannot <laughs> dress that up in any way. I'm lucky. Is it tough? Do you feel like you sometimes lose? Yeah. The, do you sometimes feel like you're not a fan anymore? Yes, I would. Well, oh, no, not. I wouldn't say I'm not a fan anymore. I would say that the fan experience is diluted yeah. because you are always having to think beyond just what your emotional reaction is to a situation. Mm. It, it's always what is the story here? Yeah. You know, Norwich have just thrown away a three mm. goal lead at Leeds United no. the story there is Leeds United still aren't going to make the playoffs but mm. inside you're thinking oh Norwich you know? so yes I think I think for me I find yeah. that results the reality of results sink in once I'm at home on a Saturday mm. evening so only then you go oh we lost today or then you really get excited about the win after again as soon as the game finishes my job is to get down to the side of the pitch yeah. and try and interview the manager whoever it may be at that point so trying to think of the it's right question many. exactly trying to think of the right <laughs> questions try, that, that's always your main yeah. concern before you can then actually sit and think about what was that like? Yeah. Like? Interesting. Do you ever miss kind of the Do you, sitting, like, I was going to say this, and, like the carnage you, when we score. Um, I went to the Wolves game at Carrow Road this season in January. I took the day off and took my son to his first oh, proper oh, uh, wow, game. Can, that's brilliant. And what, uh, what really, and this is something that I think we can, not just us, but I think the media misses out on. What really stuck with me from that game was arriving at about half past two at mm. Carrow Road and being outside with the fans as they're arriving at the ground. What a wonderful atmosphere that is and yeah. what a wonderful sense of community you've got. Because when you're a commentator or you're working for media, you get to the ground really early. Yeah. You get there before the fans. You go on air at two o'clock. You're broadcasting from inside an empty stadium. Yeah. Mm. The action's all outside at that point. And just switch roles with Rob for a week. Yeah. One of the reasons we've started to make more, actually, of sending Rob out amongst the supporters is to try and get that atmosphere across mm. a bit. Because I think... Being outside the ground, being amongst the fans is such an important part of football coverage. Yeah. And it's something that has been neglected a lot by radio, by TV, by everybody. Because Partly because it's not as easy to broadcast from those areas. Yeah. It's very easy to broadcast from the press box. And actually, if you've got 27,000 people at Carrow Road, you've got 27,000 different stories to tell, different reasons mm, yeah. for being there, different adventures they've had on the way. And a lot of that is more interesting than hearing people talk about taking each game as it comes. That's frankly. why I talk Norwich City's so, done quite well, isn't it? Really? I, I think, you, yeah, I do, I do think the whole social media, fan TV, all of that, I think it's it's shown that some of the best stories, some of the most entertaining mm. stuff does come from the supporters. And some, some media organisations have lost sight of that. And I think it's when you go to a game as a fan, you suddenly go, Oh wow! This is you know, two o'clock or you know, half past two. Everyone's outside. This yeah. is where you yeah, want to be. It's the bustle. So, yeah. yeah, Adam. Um, worst and best game to call. Yeah. I think we've already done this. Yeah, haven't we? yeah. But um, any standouts? Yeah, I would say um, the, the worst games to commentate on are always those those ones where nothing happens. You yeah, know, where it's nil nil. Where you, you play Walsall in League One and it finishes nil nil because oh, you can actually do. You may do a decent job as a commentator, mm. but you know that nobody's going to remember it. Yeah. Nobody's yeah. gonna. Nobody's gonna say. You did a brilliant and, job and, on the nil nil against Walsall. <laughs> yeah. No offence, but the radio probably goes off as well. It probably does. You know, on a lot of occasions, yeah. it does. You can send. You can sense people. Has there ever been a moment when you've literally been like, I don't know what to say? Oh, many. Yeah, yeah. many and varied. I, I yeah. literally don't know yeah. what to yeah. say. Yeah, and that's one of the reasons why. And it's not just me. I think commentators are so worried about that, about not having anything to say, that they all, well, we all, tend to do a lot more research than we probably need to. I mean, yeah. I've got a. I've got a book. It's in my bag over there, actually. A book. It's a piece of, of art. Your book. Have you I've seen it? Yeah, yeah. It's a beautiful piece of art. I've got it over there. Should we? Should we get it? Do you want me to? I'm, if, yeah, go on. We'll let you it. out. Okay. A bit because homework for you. The book. Because have you seen this book? I haven't seen the book. I've seen Chris construct this, and it is like an I artist lo- I, painting. I, I love it when we bring things on set that we've not planned for, like mm. the bottle opener last week. I love that Chris the ties and now this around the with book. Him. Look, because I, I hate to lose it. Okay. Look at the book. Look at that. That. How many seasons have you got out of that? This is this is just this season. I should do oh, a new one for each season. Have you mm-hmm. kept all of the old ones? Uh, yes. Yeah. I'm not doing anything with them. Yeah. I, I, what do you mean? Oh, oh no, no, no! I tell you what you need to do so, with them. They need to go in the <laughs> Norwich City Museum yeah, when they open it. They, yeah, when they do well, the new city stand. If they want it, so there we go. Hundred percent. 
Let's right. show, let's show the show camera. That. Let's sat to it. Oh, it'd be rulers falling out. Like, you've got to have a ruler <laughs> to be able to do your proper life. Oh, it's a bendy it's one. It's a bendy well. ruler, oh, yeah. Of course. That, can the camera see that all right? Yeah, probably That's not. That's the notes from... I'll, I'll, show I'll you give it a close-up. Close up. Those are the notes from Saturday's so, game. So this we is do wild commentary. Give it a Tim close-up. <laughs> nice. And you've... So talk me through the different colours as well. Oh, so I've right. seen blue, red, green, yeah. yellow. So the... the well, so the red for the numbers because it's easy to pick yeah, up on. Yeah. Black for the players' names, and then in blue, one little fact about each player. Fact, not stat. Mm. Fact. Uh, the fact. So that's we do that before the game, and the other side is the once the team news comes in, you've okay. got the formations and how they're lining up, and then during the game, um, I'm in the headphones fed scores from other matches. Yeah. And I sometimes they yeah, come in when you haven't got yeah. a chance to mention them on air, so you just make a note as they come in, and then down here you write down the goals because. If you have a game where there are lots of goals and you sometimes lose touch, mm. so it's just the, the timings and who scores. So it's just stuff that you you're talking about. If you've got nothing to say, you can always just twenty minutes to go. You can there, say, yeah. "Well, hang on. Well, let's just people just tuning in. Let's just remind you what's happened so far, and you've yeah. got it without having to think about it." What's so this? What's this at the top little tally? That's a corner count. Oh. Leeds four, Norwich two. Corner Corners. count. Yeah. Interesting. Because then you can say Norwich have got their first corner of the game. If it's up, and sometimes that can be quite. There was one game we didn't win any. It probably is. Nice. That is amazing, and that and I mean it. That should actually be in the Norwich City History Museum when they open the new city stand. Do you think so? Yeah, a million so percent. Let's definitely. talk about this as well. Is there anything you look for in a notepad? So at the start, <laughs> well, no, at the start you, of the season. Now, I'm really glad about this. In yeah. terms of oh my actual God. Lines, stationary. It, yeah, this is my specialist subject. <laughs> I love stationary. This is my specialist too. subject. Oh, there God. are there's. Uh, there's a Sorry well, to all well, the people that are listening to this. Yeah. Everybody. There's a well-known high street news agent and retailer where I get pens from. There has to be a certain type of pen. Okay. There's, what pen? I don't know what pen it is. Are you a biro pen? Or? I don't when I see them. I don't, I've never read the side of it. But is it one of the four kind of pushy... pushy no, 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 no. It's got to be. It's got to write neater than that. Fountain? Okay. Yeah. And Fountain? You, um, no, it's just a ballpoint. Okay. Just a ball, classic yeah. ballpoint, yeah. yeah. And you, and Black? Yeah, mainly all different colours. Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, and you've got to have a highlighter pen to highlight the players who've got yellow colours. I've just got this really funny picture of Chris like, in the commentary box with his Norwich City <laughs> pencil case. Yes. There is a pencil case. <laughs> That's in the bag as well. And I'm making myself a fool here, aren't I? Like bulldog clips. Now this comes from I learned a very very valuable lesson one year at Coventry. I think I've heard this actually. This is, heard I it. think I've heard this. This story. is the most expensive. Before, <laughs> <first. laughs> right, before this was invented, or before I thought of this, I yeah. used to just have notes like this on a clipboard. And then there was one game at Coventry where a swirling wind blew around the Rico and often <laughs> the notes blew away. And a, a, a steward had to oh, had to go and catch it. So these keep the notes in place. <laughs> when it's windy and the book is better than a clipboard. There we are. Has there ever been a time when you've still got any viewers? Um, <laughs> it's rained and everything's smudged. Um, it can, that came very close to happening in the famous. Do you remember the five-one at Colchester yeah. in League One? That was a. That was yeah. a. Oh, that oh, day, Gary Doherty. That oh, day, Gary Doherty scored. The, the problem with that day was that we, the, the new stadium at Colchester, the press box is slightly towards the front, which means that the roof of the stand doesn't quite cover the press box. <laughs> okay. So we had some. Not only did Norwich win, it was five 0 in the end, wasn't it? Five nil. Uh, yeah, Ollie yeah. Johnson scored. Ollie Johnson, yeah. So, scored, yeah. So five nil, and my, but my main. Um, memory from that game is some rainwater coming very very close to some electricity <laughs> oh no <laughs> which is a, it could have been a heady mix yeah okay. thankfully didn't um, right but that, was, I'm that sure. game almost got cooled off I think yeah. I seem to remember as well it was that heavy it was, it was really it might have been before the well that's the new right? feature of this podcast stationary stationary talk. Um, oh corner, I like stationary it. Corner. Um, Ewan Johnson um, <laughs> who I think asked about 15 questions Good old Ewan, I've already yeah. gone for this one um, Hugh, Hugh, who is your favourite co-commentator and why? No, 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 don't pinpoint. No, 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 you have to. No, no, he has to. I've had enough of this not giving this Chris is, pressure. Yeah, now this is like asking people to choose their favourite child. because And? you got the, to. The, 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 if someone was to sit with you for the rest of your career, <laughs> who would it be? The, and let's just say that Rob is Rob's always there. Rob's, Rob's part always, of the furniture. Yeah, Rob's, yeah you, Rob is very much part of the furniture. Um, co-commentators, they, all, the they genuinely, and this is going to sound like such a cop-out, and it's not, they genuinely all have different things that they bring to the radio party. I'm, well, I'm you not letting this drop. Not, no, well, no, no, we're not moving on to this. So I'm saying that it's because you're very good at picking them. Okay. That you, might, yeah, okay. Bad Thank you. Nice. Uh, yeah, it's, they all have different experiences and different things to throw into the mix. And I think we, we're, we're lucky with Norwich City that we're... So many nice guys. About. Exactly. So many people who've played yeah. for the club stay and live in the area. Yeah. Uh, those who don't have got nearly... All got fond memories of the time for the club. Mm. So when you ring them up out the blue yeah. and say, "Hello, I'm Radio Norfolk. Do you want to do a commentary with us?" There are 
very few people who just, kind of sometimes people can't do it mm. but yeah. most of them say they would love to have done it if they could so I'm yeah. just lucky with the, the, the squad yeah. that I've managed to assemble but come on there must have been one that stands out that, in terms of being really like the, good the, or... the best co-commentator just just say just one well, funniest game moment. funniest moment funniest moment no 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 don't change it <laughs> well, the best on. co-commentator you, you, for one game you did mention Mark Rivers earlier on and um, his Pronunciation of Yannick Wilskut was interesting. Oh, oh, no, yes. no, no, no. <laughs> yes, I remember that. The, the Wigan. Wigan, Wigan yeah. yeah, that, yeah I that was interesting. So, That's yeah, hilarious. We, you do get some funny moments from, from okay, all that'll of do. Yeah. But, yeah. We'll let him uh, get out right. Okay, yeah. so let's move on. I, we've, got, we've still got a game to play. QPR. Yeah. Um, possibly the biggest like dead rubber game ever. Oh, they've right. basically I think that's the just, biggest game ever then. They've, they've, <laughs> they've, they're not going down. They won at the weekend. Um, mm-hmm. We're not going anywhere. What are we thinking? Is there any talking points from it? I would love, love, love to see as many youth players as possible. Like I really would. I really would. Because there's the the experienced players this season haven't delivered. And for me, in terms of the, the, the long-term objective, I think that you could actually... I think the board, uh, Alan Irvin, Stuart Webber, could use this game in, in a very clever fashion. And they could incorporate some youngsters to kind of say to the fans, look, this is what... We're changing now. This is it. We're going to actually do something rather than the same team. And don't get me wrong. I would rather we lost 2-0 and played our youth players. I, I, I'm going to put it out there. I really would because I think it's important to show the Norwich fans that there's there's something good on the horizon. So have a good summer holiday, relax, and then get ready to fight and chant louder than you've ever done before. Or play all seven players that are going to be released. I would like to see the majority of them get a... a John Ruddy, right. certainly. Oh, we know, yeah. No, to get goes without saying. I yeah. think that's important. I think... I, I and There's always excitement about young players, and I get it, because we all like seeing youth products come through. But I do think that, even in a game like this, a place in the Norwich City first team is something that has to be earned. And I yeah. think that you can't just give a, a youngster a go... Just, because the others have been rubbish. Like. Yeah, I think that you've... Because you can do more harm than good. I, I remember going to a fans forum... Years ago, Darren Huckabee was still a player for Norwich then. He was yeah. on the panel. And yeah. this is um, something that comes up time after time. Somebody asked him about why no young players come through. Why yeah. don't young players get a chance at Norwich City? Mm-hmm. And he said, look, we're Norwich City. We're not Manchester United, who were the big team at the time. Mm-hmm. He said, if we've got a talented young player who is good enough to get in the first team, then he's getting in the first team. Yeah. Because we can't, we, we're not in the position where we can Norwich afford City. to leave these people out. Yeah. So... It's like, Jake, it's like Jacob this season, he's forced his way in. They come the through. Pritchard, yeah. they, et cetera, et but, but I do think, and one of the things I can go on about for ages, I, I do think that the, um, that the ramp now between the level below first team football and first team football is huge. Yeah. It, you, there used to be, back in the old days, oh, when I was a boy, yeah. there used to be reserve team football. 91, yeah. 92. Later than that, slightly, where you, you would have the first team and then. Those players in the Kyle Lafferty, Yusuf Malumbu position, Basong position, who weren't playing for the first team, yeah. but were over 23, mm-hmm. would play with some youngsters. That I always thought was a much better grounding for young players. And now mm-hmm. you've got managers, Alan Irvin, Alex Neal, who are sitting there thinking, well, this young player A may be good, but I've not seen him play against yeah. proper players. The Murphys have got in the Norwich first team, having gone out on loan mm-hmm. and got that experience elsewhere. Yeah. But Mad- think, Madison's been out on loan. Yeah, I do think that's a real mm. gap. And, and he's played, been out on loan. And Madison's played first team football elsewhere. Morris so has been out on loan. He's now getting his chance in the first team. Yeah, no, I totally agree with it. I mean, from my personal opinion on the youth prospects, is that I completely changed my opinion this season because previously I, it really annoyed me when the Norwich fans were like, get a youth involved, but that's right, that's got to get them in. When there was no real substance to that argument because we were actually kind of doing okay. But when the experienced players don't deliver... I do have to slightly disagree with Chris. I, I really do genuinely believe that actually it probably makes the experienced players think, oh God, I'm in trouble now. I've got the youth on my back. I've got to run faster. I've got to run more than anyone on the pitch. Fact, stat. <laughs> <laughs> my one, by the way, is um, I, I like to say my observation rather than my, than my opinion. Okay. What's your thoughts your on observation? that? Observation. Yeah, so if you've got, so, so for example, yeah. if you wanted to say that I really think that in my, so rather than saying my opinion, that Stephen Naismith's been absolutely rubbish this game. Right. You'd say, 
My observation is that Stephen A. Smith hasn't and run as far as he that? should be. Because basically, it's by saying it's your opinion makes it quite aggressive. Whereas okay. if you say your observation is just what you've seen with your eyes so rather your, than feeling your soul. It's when you're expressing an opinion that you're not 100% confident. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, you use when the you don't want to get. it's basically when you have to cut your ass. <laughs> just let me feel free to use it. You right, know, credit, okay. credit, credit. Yeah. Yeah. Right, I think we're going we're, we're gonna to end it there. We've covered a whole lot of topics. Um, Chris, a massive thanks for giving up yeah, your time. Cheers, um, thanks for the invite. Yeah, you've got a cup of tea out of it. and uh, Yeah. Packet of crisps if you, you want. You made me talk too much. It's gone cold now. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, well, maybe another one. Uh, anyway, <laughs> massive thanks for you guys for watching. Please subscribe on um, YouTube. Go and check out the Scrimmage YouTube channel. Are we going to see any more appearances from you on there? Possibly. A face for radio. You I know, like, so. let's keep these things, um, these things few we'll and far between. We'll see. Anyway, yeah. go and check out the Scrimmage YouTube channel. Links in the description. And, of course, Radio Norfolk on a Saturday if you can't get to a game. Um, subscribe on iTunes. Subscribe anywhere you want to. Thanks very much for listening, and we'll see you very soon.